Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Super Fantify. This being a show where we talk about TV shows of the supernatural, fantasy, and or science fictional genre. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of Nancy Drew. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. Well, first and foremost, we're continuing as the crew is looking for a way to deal with the Aglaica. They run into Hannah, and it's like, all right, so they're trying to find anything about this she, uh, sea shanty. Well, it turns out it was recorded in a, a record in, like, was it like 1949, the Last time anyone saw it was in 1975 when it was checked out by a dude named Mac, and but Mac never returned it. They end up tracking down Mac at a particular, well, they go to his address and it turns out it's a bar. Mac used to come in there all the time. He died like 40 years ago and he has a uh, very high uh, tab. Um, he never paid off like, was it like 847 bucks or something like that? So... I thought it was interesting when we introduced the fact is that uh, Nick is the one being haunted, which is interesting because usually that starts off with Nancy. For Nancy not to be the focal point hauntee in this uh, was kind of interesting. But also it can make you wonder, like, why? Because at first I was thinking, like, oh, the reason why Mac was haunting him was because of the flask they ended up getting. And that might have awoken things. Maybe, maybe not. But, uh, oh, actually, that not the case, but we'll get to that in a second. But um, I was thinking that had to be, there was some correlation there. But, uh, cause I was like, oh, like, you dealt with all the hauntings last episode, season. Now you got the Aglaica, now you got another ghost. So you kind of welcomed another ghost in your home. I thought that was it. But it turns out the reason why Buddy went after Nick is because Nick is black. And it's like, oh, so the reason why he's like, oh, the only thing common between me and his friend Buddy is like, Buddy was black. So that's the reason why he's coming after me. Um, what was interesting, and I thought this was so dope, that they tied this in with other hauntings from last season. It's like, because I didn't remember the fact that Nick ran into uh, Buddy last season. And then, like, obviously the other, like, Rita, and then the other two ghosts, and that dude. Like, the other, like, four ghosts were people that Nancy had run into. And obviously they all ran into Rita and everything. And I was like, dude, because that was before. All before the Gleeka stuff, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. So they were setting this up that far in advance just to kind of trail that all back like that. I just thought that was so interesting. I was like, oh, they just seem like random one-off ghosts. And it's like, well, to be fair, they've kind of brought the ghost world to them the moment they kind of opened that doorway. But it's just interesting to know that like it would all kind of come back full circle like this. And it'd be like, oh, they're all connected to the Gleeka. I was like, that's so interesting. Because the last person to have the record is is um Mac. But then, like, they're well, now they're trying to figure out. Well, at first, Nick is trying to talk to Mac, but Mac doesn't really listen because anytime the record got brought up, he kind of like snaps because it's like, oh, can you think I could get a drink, but he's like, oh, yeah, sure. But then it's like, I was actually kind of surprised. Like, he didn't, like, I was like, oh, man, they're going to come by and think you did all that stuff when they were in the store and those mirrors got broken. I was like, oh, man, they're going to think he did that. But it uh, turned out, I mean, at least what, what, they saw in the, what we saw in the confines of the episode didn't seem like that was an issue. Which obviously Nick's dealing with a lot because not only he's got to deal with all this haunting by Mac, which leaves bruises on him, which um, is super effed up when you find out the truth behind that. that basically, it's because he killed his friend Buddy because Buddy took the record from Because it's like, yeah, you owe me like $800 on your tab. And so I took the record as collateral. And who, sadly, Buddy didn't know he was going to get, you know messed up bad it was actually kind of effed up especially when you consider like oh um where uh the body was hidden because they initially thought it was the other friend in the group aj the sixth person they thought it was aj's body turns out to be uh buddies but um regardless on top of all this haunting and neglect uh, he also got to deal with the fact is hey his mom's in town which his mom is played by the actress i think i've seen her in plenty of other stuff too but the most recent thing was swamp thing which is interesting because that ended up being on the CW, but obviously wasn't originally on the CW. But there's always correlations and interesting like that. But uh, Millie is his mom, and it's like, oh, dad's not with you, and then she's like, yep. Yeah. It's like, yeah, I heard about what you were doing in town. You know, it's like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm. It's great that you opened this place up, but it's like, I need you to come home. And I also love because I knew there had to be a point to it when like. Uh, George was hitting that car like, idiot tourists, like, you know, watch where you're going, keep your eyes out the phone. I figured that was going to come back. I didn't expect it to be like, oh, that was his mom. Interesting. Off on the wrong foot. Because she wants Nick to come back home because we ended up finding out, like, someone he knew named Eddie ended up dying because it's like, some people were saying, like, it was like a, uh, like, he owed people money for drugs and stuff. But it was like, that kid never got mixed up in drugs. So it was just like a wrong, um wrong person situation which makes it tragic 
But um, Nick's like, I kind of have no intention of going back. But his mom is like, after everything you went through, I need you in my sight. Because it's like, me and your dad told you how to go through life, you know. Didn't specifically say it, but she pretty much put it out there in black and white of like, well, literally black, black and white in the sense of like, me and your dad tried to prepare you for everything, but even that wasn't good enough. Told you to, you know, always keep your hands visible, make it so that you never um, fight back. So it's like, you know, obviously like the things as a black man, he has to like go through life as. So it's like, you know, never give anyone an excuse. And it's like, even with all that, you still lost two years of your life. We lost you for those two years. So for her, it's like, I want to be, I want you nearby so I can keep an eye on you. So you, I need you to move back to Florida. But for Nick, it's like, he has too much here. I mean, to be fair, it's not going to stop the Aglaica, but it was also, he's built a life for himself. He's owned this business. He's making a profit from it. He has a girlfriend, you know, George, which obviously George is kind of in that awkward position where it's like, oh, ha, 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 ha. I ran into your mom really. She's like, yeah, she punched a trunk. And it's just like, ah. Oh. And even like George being like, oh, she thinks like I, I forgot what she was saying that I like anger, like I, I'm, I'm, I'm mean or something like that. And Bess is like, well, she's only seen that one side of you. And then George is kind of looking and she's like, which that side of you doesn't exist in the real world is what I meant to say. Um, so there's that whole situation, which speaking of parents, I thought was kind of an interesting thing they've set up where basically Ace and uh, Carson or like Ace kind of helps out Carson. And, you know, and it's like, he's like, you know, I know things between me and Nancy aren't good. And she probably most likely filled you guys in, but just, I'm glad to know, regardless of everything that she has, you guys looking out for her. She is okay. All right. And it's like, yeah, don't want to worry him about, I mean, technically we we're both, we've all been cursed and we're all destined to die. In fact, we all saw ourselves die, including Nancy, but don't want to concern him with that. But it's at the end of, at the end of the day, it's like, He's like, you know, make sure she eats. When she's got a lot on her mind, she's stressing, she doesn't eat. He's like, yeah, it seems like that runs in the family, you know. Uh, he kind of keeps it from Nancy Day's kind of visiting her dad until, like, he's getting some stuff. And she's like, oh, yeah, the only person I know that likes that is Carson Drew. And she looks at him, and Ace is kind of like, she's like, oh. So she, and, but she is concerned, like, oh, so how is he? He's like, oh, he's good, you know. Uh, I mean, he, you know, he just needed someone to talk. And she's like, he could have talked to me. For 19 years. And it's like, I get it. Because um, Ace actually sat down and was like, hey, tell me your side of the story. And for him, it's like, he knew what was going on. And he, he was scared that if he ever told Nancy the truth, it would change her. Not just change everything with their family, but also change her. Because I think probably learning that she, not only like, you know, the circumstances of what happened to your mother, but also who your dad is, the Hudson's. Like, I think that's another thing, like. It's because this is this is our little girl and they've come to love her for who she's become. But they're like, you know, learning who you really are can change you. I mean, obviously, we learned that last episode, too. Like Nancy's struggling with her identity. It's like holding on like everything she's ever known herself to be. It's like it's, it's a lie because it's not really who I am. I'm I'm Lucy's child. I'm Ryan's daughter, you know, so that all plays a part in all of it. And I thought it was interesting how Carson was like, you know, you ever get this bad feeling like something terrible is about to happen, but rather than focus on it, you kind of look away and you just focus on the present so that you can just live in this perfect moment. He's like, he says like, yeah, I get that. You know, especially, you know, he's been feeling that a lot lately considering everything going down. Cause they've been mentioned in the episode, he's not even working um, at the restaurant because just, I mean, considering like, oh, I'm going to end up on a hook. So even more reason why to not even show up at work. So, but I also like the fact is that his mom actually finds out cause she's like, wait, who's trying to kill my Nick or oh, Ned? Uh, you better explain everything to me now. It's like, wait, there's ghosts and everything. And she's like, I know this. And Ned says, like, I know this is hard to explain. She's like, no, I don't need you to explain the supernatural to me because like her beliefs and everything like that. So it's like the supernatural, I believe in. I don't need you to explain it to me. And Nancy's backing up like, whoa. And it's like, oh, I get it, Nick. You just want to stay here because of your girlfriend. And in that moment, you see Nancy almost looking like, wait, what? It's like, oh. I mean, granted, Nancy made it clear, you know, it's like, oh, she, you know, you know, when she asked Nick to stay, which I love George being like, yeah, you totally, you should totally stay at Nancy's. Um, but when it was all said and done, like that reveal and everything, it's like, yeah, me and George, you know, everything with, you know, the Aglaica, with Owen and your dad, like just never found the right time to bring up the whole us thing. We, but we wanted to tell you the truth. She's like, no, I, I'm glad you two were happy. You know, it's like, you know, at the end of the day, that's what matters. I mean, obviously, it's probably a little awkward and complicated. But I mean, granted, your previous boyfriend, Owen, being dead, you know, your ex, you've seen him with someone that 
hey, wasn't always your friend who's easily become your a dear friend of yours now. Um, but I also love that, you know, George had stood up to Nick's mom, but along with him, because he said for the first time in his life, he stood up to his mom and said no. And that's something she's never heard. So it's like, she's probably not going to take that the best. But I thought it was interesting where, you know, the, obviously the parallels between them where it's like, you know, you should talk to your, because Ace was suggesting like, you should talk to your dad, especially with this Aglaika stuff. Like, we don't know how much time we have left and you kind of don't want to have those type of regrets. You want to be able to say what you need to say. Um, which, which at the end of the day, she did go and visit her dad and drop off some stuff. So what Ace said did kind of resonate with her. Cause I think also Nick, like things, ha uh, being good between him and his mom at the end of the day too. Cause like not wanting things to kind of, because Nick was like, I'm scared that like, if she leaves now like, under these circumstances, that might be the last time I ever see her. So he wanted to kind of repair things. In fact, George is the one that actually reached out because she was like, I'm sorry, I can be very vicious. The fact of the matter is she's like, I had to grow up that way. My mom's a little bit of a drunk and was kind of irresponsible. So I had to raise three siblings on my own. So it made me kind of grow up hard and made me kind of grow up, you know, vicious. And, you know, but it's like you want someone like me to have Nick's back because that means I will always have his back. And that was just kind of in that moment, you know, she respected George and like, all right, you need help with this whole situation. So... Uh, what can I do? So obviously the whole bar situation, they're trying to find the um, the uh, record because it's like, well, it wasn't an orphanage. It wasn't in all these places. Um, so it's got to be there. So and they're looking for it. And at the same time, Nick is being attacked. And you kind of feel bad because you're like, oh, well, kind of suck, buddy, because granted you I mean, you suck, Matt, because you killed your buddy, uh well, buddy, buddy, and now you're killing Nick. Granted, you're a, you're a ghost, so you're just driven by regret, and you're it's just part of the whole ghost deal. So it's not like you're necessarily doing it on purpose, but it is reminiscent of like obviously ghosts are kind of trapped in that cycle of when they died or how the circumstances what they were holding on to, and he was holding on to rage towards Buddy. And now Nick's kind of the recipient of that. It's obviously once again the bruise marks and stuff all over his body, but um, luckily they were able to get the um record and play it and the moment it's playing you hear about a marvin and odette i'm like okay that has to be the glaika's real name and it's like the glaika is what she'll always be and in that moment all five of the ghosts are there like after hearing the record and then they fizzle away so i don't know whether that's supposed to mean like now their souls have moved on because it turns out like the last thing you'll hear is the glaika song so i think in that moment by playing the song, you brought them, to, you stopped them, but in particular him. But I think at that moment, the Aglaika, I think that's what that's supposed to represent. I don't think that's them like passing on. I think that's the Aglaika claiming their souls. It's like, we just saw our future. So that's kind of a rough thing to kind of deal with. But, you know, this whole situation puts a lot of clarity. Like I said, Nancy at least dropped off the stuff to um, Carson. And, you know, so I think it, it's slowly but surely happening that she is kind of trying to build back up to that considering everything going down and you know Nick making it clear to his mom that he wants to you know stay here because he's like for him the the hardest thing um in his life was when the judge uh ruled on his sentence and his mom cried he was like I can't go back to Florida as you know as a man who made his mom cry so for him it's like I've got to stay here and I guess you know find his way and in a, in a sense, you know, kind of pave his own way so that he's not just labeled as just kind of that moment in his life that he can um, do more and do good with it and, you know, make his, make his mom proud. And his mom's like, well, let me pray for you. He's like, no, let me pray for you. And I just, I thought that was kind of beautiful. Even like her teaching um, George, like one of his favorite things. And she's like, oh, Okay. And Miss Nickerson, he's like, she's like, no, call me Millie. And it's like, oh, on a first naming basis with moms. Okay, things are definitely looking up and looking good. I thought that was kind of neat. I'm sure it makes her probably feel a certain way too because because she brought it up, her complicated relationship with her mom. But to be fair, we understand her mom's circumstances. It doesn't make it any easier. It doesn't take away all that George had to go through growing up super fast, having to be a mom for her siblings, not really being able to just be a child, having been taken care of like she was supposed to. You know, so it doesn't make up for that, but she's a little bit more understanding her mom's circumstances. But I think that was probably just a nice moment, just like, oh, uh, her boyfriend's mom 
being kind of motherly in that moment and then being on a first name basis and being good because it's like, oh, I'm teaching you this recipe. That means I accept you, that I like you. And I'm like, I, I think that's really, um, really nice at the end of the day, you know. But obviously, listening to the uh, sea shanty, it isn't what, you know, because at first it's kind of making it seem like, oh, she died of consumption, which Nick, Nancy was like, that doesn't make any sense. Well, well, at least the records are saying that she died of consumption, but it's like, that doesn't make any sense because you don't go full vengeful ghost like that if it was just a... But then it turns out Odette is actually on the... Like, on uh, her audio is there on the record in the background, and it, it's in French, but they translate it. Basically, her she, as well as her money, was stolen by her, and she said, like, chaperone, even a captain turned against me. Basically, they killed her just to take her riches. So... That's probably a line in line with like how the Marvins probably originally got their wealth. They stole it from her. And so now uh, those who don't pay the price end up suffering. And it's like at the, in seven days, your souls will be mine. And it's like now Nancy and them are like, which is kind of crazy to think about. It was that shorter time. Apparently it's like, oh, them breaking the Aglaica deal. It's like, oh, that was seven days ago. Not seven days ago. It was uh, four days ago. They, they're down to three days now. It's like, whoa. So, but also the Aglaica song is like the last thing they'll hear at at the end of the day. But it's like, it's sad because it's not surprising because you figure, I mean, granted Owen's situation, it makes sense why he in particular was kind of like the price to pay initially. But obviously they broke that price that was supposed to be paid. Uh, but now you make sense why, because he's a Marvin. Well, I guess because it's a he's a male Marvin. And to be fair, Bess isn't a full well, she's got Marvin blood in her, but I think her, her being a lady and probably like her circumstances amongst the family, that probably might, oh, it doesn't make that like a, she might be the key, sorry, uh, I don't know if that got caught on the audio, sorry. Um, she might be the key to this, her circumstances, her kind of being an outsider in the family while also being part of the family, which is kind of sad when you actually think about it because she falls too for the nail to kind of get into this family and this family's got like the complicated blood history that it's got. Its money was built on stealing it from a woman and killing her and taking her riches, you know? So, I mean, but it makes sense because at the beginning, like Nancy looked at like a nearby Mar Captain Marvin's grave and there were claw marks and the Aglaica was nearby. So it's like, okay, so you definitely have bad blood with the, um, with the Marvins, but now we kind of understand. So now they do know her story. So it's like, is there any real way to get, like, I guess for her, it's like now they know the truth, but I guess maybe exposing the Marvins, like where their family history is, like maybe they're aware of it, but they haven't let anyone know. I'm curious, like I said, I'm curious what kind of effect this has on Bess. I mean, granted it was back then, but even then, like, uh, I'm not sure the Marvins have other skeletons in their closet. Obviously, like, she met a lot of her like, other family members last season. They weren't, like, the best people in certain regards either, so... I'm just curious to see kind of how ultimately that will uh, end up playing out. But then they also uh, go, you know, bury uh, Max uh, uh, Flask with him. And it's like, well, I hope you rest in peace. I hope you weren't alone at the end. Uh, but then they look around and it's like, wait, there's flowers. Oh, there's other flowers over here. Wait, this is so-and-so's grave. These are Re this is Rita's grave. And it's like, wait, these are everyone that died. And then they look at one of the cards and it says Kitsune. Kitsune meaning fox. The person that was in the photo had a fox tattoo. Because they thought AJ was dead. But it's like, right, the body ended up being buddies. So that means AJ's still out there alive. He's alive. That means there's a way to beat this Aglaica. I think the way to beat it is some way, shape, or form, you have to sacrifice the other people. I think that's why everyone else ended up dying. Because I think, because that's why he apologized. Or either it's either it's survivor's guilt in the sense that I'm the only one that survived. But it's also like the Glaka is going to claim everyone's soul. So how did you get around it? By probably offering everyone else. I mean, granted, it was seen as like accidents, but part of me was also like, could it be that AJ actually killed him? And by killing all of them and tarnishing his own soul, their souls automatically were supposed to kind of go to the Glaco. Maybe that's the price. I don't know, because that might be what that's kind of hinting. Like for for someone to survive, they would probably have to kill the other members. Or maybe that's how you do it in general. Like as long as you kill someone, you're fine. Maybe he, I, I don't know. I'm reading too much into it, but just him apologizing made me think like, it made it seem like they were kind of the price so that he didn't die. Maybe that's what that was. Or maybe 
he's the one that kind of suggested the maybe he's kind of the Nancy in the situation that like he's the one that kind of called upon the Glaika and they ended up paying the price and once again he's the one that survived and that might be a parallel that might be kind of creating where Nancy's like because she made it sure she was like she said it last episode she wants to make sure they survive because what Ace said last episode kind of resonated with her where it's like I did kind of drag everyone in this everyone got involved in this because they're trying to help me out which is the irony behind everything because Nancy always wanted to handle things on her own and getting help from her friends that's something growth she had over the course of season one and that growth ended up inadvertently dragging all these other people into it and they're, they're, your friends are potentially going to die because of it so like because you grew attached to these people because you let them in inadvertently i'm sure nancy will potentially look at it like that because she kind of has that point of view on herself sometimes so sadly she could probably potentially look at like if i had never gotten close to you guys we wouldn't be here but also i wouldn't have uncovered so much about tiffany's murder also learning about my own history you know who i really am so different angles uh to this whole situation so i'm really curious to see where all this ends up taking us uh, going into the next episode with this, you know, is AJ someone we met in town, which I highly doubt it. It's most likely just going to be like a, a new character, but I'm, I'm curious to see, um, you know, whether I'm right or not. I'm, I'm probably, I'm most likely wrong, but I'm curious to see how he was able to uh, get around the Aglaica deal, you know, because it says like, yeah, he came here to visit everyone that was up since 75 to, you know, all the victims of the Aglaica. So we'll, uh, we'll see how that uh, turns out. Uh, but really, that's all I'm going to talk about. Until the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, look like to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day, and goodbye.